Before we get started, we just want to thank Hoham for sending us the iSteady V2 smartphone gimbal for review before the launch, but we're not paid to say anything besides our own opinions. It is always very exciting to review something before it is launched. Let's get straight to the point. Hoham emphasizes on the AI sensor of this new gimbal, and I gotta say, it is very impressive. They are definitely targeting this gimbal for content creators on TikTok, Instagram stories, YouTube shorts, and more, because you can remote control the gimbal, the camera, without touching them. And I was like, what? A lot of new smartphone gimbals on the market has face tracking within their app. You always have to record the video within their app first, then export it to other apps. And that means you cannot use face tracking for streaming, but the iSteady V2 can track your face even in other apps like TikTok, Zoom, FaceTime, any streaming apps and more because the AI face tracking does not even need an app to work. This is the major difference between the V2 and the V1 of the iSteady gimbal as well. You can easily tell them apart because V2 has an AI sensor bump at the top of the gimbal and it has more than just the sensor and I will show you that later in the video. Before you start using the iSteady V2 gimbal, you will need to download the Hoham app to activate it. There's a lot of features within that app, but we'll talk about that later because again, the AI face tracking does not require any app to work. To use the AI face tracking feature, all you need to do is to click and hold the button at the top of the gimbal, then you will see a red LED light at the top. Now the AI sensor is ready to track. To tell the AI sensor to start tracking, simply make an OK sign with your hand facing the sensor until you see the red LED turns green. Then the gimbal will start tracking your face using the sensor. You might be wondering what is the difference between the AI tracking and the face tracking that is also available. I will tell you the difference very soon. There is a couple of gestures that you can do while the AI tracking is on. You can stop the tracking by putting up your palm facing the sensor if you want the gimbal to stop tracking you. You can also rotate the camera into portrait mode by pointing both thumbs to the right and that is pretty cool. Just keep in mind that the AI face tracking needs to be reactivated again every time you change your orientation of your camera. Yes you do have to use both of your thumbs to rotate the camera. I wish they can do it with just one hand, but it might be too easy to rotate the camera accidentally. To rotate the camera back to landscape mode, two thumbs up. The AI sensor is very sensitive if you are wondering, because I was literally having so much fun flipping the camera back and forth between portrait and landscape mode. Just don't do it to your own gimbal. I did it just to test the sensitivity. I don't think it is good for the gimbal motors to do that. We were able to make changes with gestures at up to about 2 meters away from the gimbal during our test and I think that is a very reasonable distance if you want to record yourself clearly on the camera. The AI tracking on the iSteady V2 is good for situations where you are away from the gimbal because it is not as sensitive and snappy as face tracking. The tracking motions are more natural and smoother for you to be a couple of meters away from the camera, and that's why I think it is good for content creators on platforms like TikTok. Let's say if you're making a video on TikTok using the AI tracking on the iSteady V2, you can now create a completely different video compared to others with camera motions that follow you without a cameraman, and that will definitely make you look much cooler. This feature is also great for creators that want to have a camera that tracks the motion of themselves without another person's help. For example, a cooking show or a tutorial video will definitely benefit from this feature. You can also have a more dynamic Zoom or FaceTime meeting without having to stay at one spot. Let's talk about the difference between the AI tracking and the regular face tracking. You can only use the built-in face tracking feature within the Hoham app because it uses the camera to track your face, and that is totally understandable. Another main difference we found is that face tracking feels faster and snappier than AI tracking, and it seems like it will stay on the subject a little bit better. I'm sure they will be able to do that with the AI sensor by firmware updates in the future. Let's talk about the buttons on the gimbal and how to use them. There is the usual joystick for you to pan and tilt the camera, a button on the left to start and stop recording and take a photo within the Hoham app, 
a button on the right for you to one click to change the orientation of the camera and double click to center it. There's also a zoom in and out trigger on the side of the gimbal that you can use for a digital zoom within the Hoham app. Oh, I almost forgot to mention the button at the top of the gimbal. Besides activating the AI sensor, it also allows you to turn on the front facing LED light by a simple click. There are three levels of brightness that you can choose from. It helps a lot when you are filming yourself in a darker environment so you don't have to bring another light. In the next part, we'll talk about what kind of features are available in the Hoham app. If you feel like jumping around, feel free to use the timestamps in the description below. Using the app will give you the full control over how the gimbal should work in different modes and you will be able to control the cameras of your phone with the buttons on the gimbal. Okay, let's talk about how to use the Hoham app with the iSteady V2 gimbal. Let's turn on the gimbal first. Make sure that Bluetooth is on on your device. I have the Hoham app installed, so I'm just going to tap onto it and open it. It's always going to be in portrait mode, but uh, anyway, you can still see the buttons. Before you start using the camera app within the Hoham app, you will need to go through the process to activate the gimbal. I've done that already, so all you need to do right now is to tap on to connect, and it will connect to the gimbal, and you just need to tap on start. And now we are within the Hoham camera app that you can also control using the gimbal. So let's say if I want to zoom in and out, I can use the trigger to do so, to do this, to zoom in, to zoom out. And of course, I can press the record button on the left to record or take a picture because I was in picture mode. And you can also flip between picture mode and video mode by double clicking the button on the left. And of course, other control, it's pretty much the same. The right hand side button will allow you to one click to change the orientation of the gimbal like this. And go back and double click to center it if it's off center. The joystick, it's for you to pan the camera around like this, double click to center it. Within the app, you have all these usual buttons for you to change your settings of your camera. You can turn on the flashlight, you can flip the camera from the back to the front, or you can manually do that by triple clicking the left button to flip it to the front facing camera. So now you can see the camera that I'm using to record this video with. And if you do that again, it will just go back to the back camera. And here we have face tracking. If you tap onto this, when there is a face in front of the camera, it will start tracking that person and the gimbal will start panning to follow that person. That's face tracking. And if you want to change the mode of the gimbal, you have to go into settings and you have the ability to change your resolution of your video from 1080p to 4K to different frame rate and you can change your zoom speed. And of course, you can set up some grid if you want to have more of a precise kind of filming environment and you can have the timer and professional mode if I turn it on this is actually really interesting because after you turn it on you have all these information where you can change the uh, uh, exposure compensation the ISO white balance because now the camera is in auto mode but another really really important thing is you can actually change the camera from the regular back camera to telephoto and ultra wide. So this was not available before on the uh, ice study gimbal from Hoham as I went through all the uh, reviews in the past. Uh, I'm not too sure, don't quote me on that, but they might have done it or included it in uh, a software update, but now it is included, so you don't have to worry about that. So you can change it to a wide angle. I'm just gonna flip it back to the regular back camera. So that's the professional mode. I was gonna say like expert mode. And if you want to change the settings or the mode of the gimbal, you can tap onto this icon right there and you have working mode. Now the gimbal, when you first turn on the gimbal, it will always be under pan and tilt follow. That means it's gonna follow whatever direction uh, up and down and left and right. 
pan follow will only do the panning motion. They have an explanation at the bottom, which is really nice. And all lock, it's basically, it will just lock it at this angle, no matter how you pan the, uh, the gimbal. And point of view, it's all motion. So panning left and right, tilting up and down, and also rotating left and right. So this is basically all motion. So I'm just gonna flip it back to pan and tilt follow. And you have the follow speed. These are really general gimbal settings, so I would suggest you to play around within the settings and pick your best settings for your kind of shooting needs. And you have also the ability to change the uh, direction of the joystick and the speed of the joystick. And there's an auto calibration. This is really important, especially when you are first using this gimbal. I would suggest you to place the gimbal on, let's say something flat, a flat surface, a table, make sure that it is flat, so it's not like slanted or anything. Tap on auto calibration and calibrate the gimbal for your specific smart device. So that's really, really important. And AI vision position calibration is for you to calibrate the AI sensor at the top. So that's the settings and of course you have different modes on the right hand side you have time lapse slow motion photo video and for moment this is really interesting for moment they have some presets motions that you can kind of start to record with a specific effect within the video so let's say they call like an effect that it's like 360 rotating your camera 360 while you are moving or walking back and forth that is called an inception mode or something i am going to go into moment uh, mode and show you guys the effects but i'm gonna quickly pause the the audio because they do have some music playing in the background built in in the video you can turn them off you can turn them off so don't worry but i'm gonna have to turn them off because i don't want to be uh copyright striked so i'm just gonna tap onto it just wait oh it's already muted because <laughs> I muted it before. <laughs> so there is some music playing in the background if you want that music. But again, don't quote me on that. I'm not sure if it's going to give you like a copyright strike. <laughs> so this is Inception mode. As you can see, they have a video demonstration that is really nice. And you just need to tap on start and then the gimbal will allow you to start using that mode if you press record. And some other modes, I don't know what that's for, but panorama panoramic video which is nice time lapse dolly zoom this is interesting you're moving away from the subject but you're also zooming in at the same time digitally so it will create this kind of effect dynamic lucky i don't know what lucky is lucky time <laughs> so these are the modes within the moment of the app so that's a really cool kind of um feature if you want to be creative but you also don't have the ability to control everything at the same time manually for like or yourself so that's something you can definitely look into while we're here since we are looking at the gimbal front facing um, we have this part right here that uh, it's besides the AI sensor it also houses an LED light that you can turn on oh wait so this is the LED front facing LED light for you to film yourself within a darker environment. There are three different levels of brightness. So that's the LED light. And let's take a look at how face tracking is available within the app because that is a little different from AI tracking. I'm just gonna flip the camera to the front so it can detect my face. So if I have face tracking on, it's going to follow me because it sees a face. And it's actually pretty snappy as you can see. And if I tap to turn it off, I can center the gimbal again. And if I have this, I know you can't really see it right now because of the background. If I tap onto this little hand, that means I'm using gesture mode to control the gimbal. If I tap onto it, gesture control is on. You can actually tell the gimbal or actually the camera to start recording. See, like my hand just wave and then it start 
recording. Um, you can make a palm or a V to start recording. But there's one thing I wish they included. Um, a gesture to stop the recording. I don't know why they didn't include it. I just can't stop the recording unless I press the stop button. I'm just gonna tap onto that. You might notice that face tracking was also activated once the gesture recording is activated at the same time, which is nice. And another cool thing is you can actually turn on the AI tracking. It's actually on right now with the red LED light. You can turn on AI tracking within the Hoham app as well. So I, all I need to do is to do an OK sign. You see that this light turns to green and it's now using AI tracking instead of face tracking. The main difference between AI tracking and face tracking with the iSteady V2 is the AI tracking is smoother and it includes a little bit more of my entire body instead of just my face. So if I turn on face tracking, oops, it will pan toward my face. That's why it's called face tracking. And you see that the AI tracking is off now, but I can still turn it back on. I don't know why I can have both on, but it's now mainly face tracking me. But if I turn this off, you'll notice that the camera panned down a little bit and it's showing my body a little bit more. So I think this is good for contents that require you to be a little bit further away from the camera or from the gimbal if you are making contents let's say with like your entire body in the shot then use the ai tracking if you want to use the gimbal for let's say flogging or um, something that you're holding the gimbal with then you should use face tracking because it's stickier and it shows more of your face and it's faster when it comes to tracking because sometimes if it's only AI tracking, it's going to lose your face or your entire body if you go too fast. Sorry, I'm looking at my <laughs> camera monitor on the side. That's why I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know where to look now. I have like four cameras now. So this is the Hoham app that allows you to use all the buttons on the gimbal and all the features and it allows you to change the modes of your gimbal. So this is something that you can utilize within the whole ham ecosystem. But again, the AI tracking does not require the whole ham app in order to work. So I'm going to show you very quickly. So if I use my palm to stop the AI tracking and I go out. So even if I'm not within any app or if I'm not in any app, I can still use the AI tracking. It's now still tracking my face when I'm not in any app. So this part of the gimbal is completely separated from anything. And this is a really good thing because maybe you want to use your favorite app to live stream, or if you want to make a video conference call using Zoom or FaceTime, you now have an AI tracking device that tracks your face. So you can have a more dynamic kind of shot and you don't have to stay in one spot. So this is a really, really important part of this new gimbal from Hoham. The stability of the iSteady V2 is very good, just like other smartphone gimbals on the market. This technology, to be honest with you, is pretty mature, so you don't really have to worry too much about the stability. Again, not every video needs to be butter smooth because sometimes it will just get unnatural. The build quality of the iSteady V2 is okay. It is completely made out of plastic and it is very, very light. I don't think it will break very easily, so I'm not too worried about it. The lightweight is definitely good for carrying the gimbal around. They have included a very cute tripod for you to make the gimbal stand, and it feels pretty sturdy. They have also included a nice pouch and a charging cable for the gimbal, the usual accessories. The main thing I really hope Hoham can include in their next gimbal is the trigger at the front for user to switch between modes instead of having them to go into the Hoham app just to change modes. This is kind of conflicting with the new no app require AI tracking feature. So hopefully they will include that in the future. That's it. Those are my thoughts on the Hoham iSteady V2 smartphone gimbal. I don't do TikTok or live stream with my phone, but I am very convinced that the gimbal will be an amazing tool for content creators on those platforms. 
This is my first time reviewing a product from Hohem and I think they are doing a really good job. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.